Dit is Papa Al van Nul, Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 20 augustus 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Normally our weekend bulletins are in English, but we will first start with a small piece of Dutch now. I can mention that we have some Morse code today and another picture in PD90 SSTV. It's one of the pictures of direction finding antennas PA3 BNX has sent me. Ik zou in de uitzendingen de komende tijd nog ingaan op wat praktische zaken rond repeatergebruik. Het lijkt alsof de repeater de afgelopen dagen wat rustiger is. Tegelijk zie je dat het wat meer opvalt dat er af en toe ook onbestemde geluiden van piraten op de repeater zijn. Het meest verkeerde dat je kunt doen in zo'n geval is op deze geluiden reageren. De mensen die dit doen zijn vooral uit op erkenning en door ze te laten weten dat je ze hoort, geef je ze wat ze willen. Ook melden dat je QRT gaat van dit soort dingen is bijzonder contraproductief. Beter is in zo'n geval te zeggen dat je telefoon hebt, ook al is dat niet waar, of dat je gewoon QRT gaat. Iedere vermelding van storingen of van andere zaken moedigt het geklier weer aan. En iemand QRT jagen wordt misschien ook wel als succesje gezien. Het is over het algemeen zo dat als niemand reageert, dat het dan vanzelf gaat vervelen en dan houdt het gewoon op. Het is in elk geval wel zo dat als je het erover de band over hebt, dat het bijna altijd het probleem vergroot. Besef dat als je op dit soort dingen reageert, dat je zelf onderdeel wordt van het probleem. Je wordt aangever van iemand bij je dienst illegale activiteiten. Ik heb een paar jaar geleden een keer met agentschap Telecom over dit soort dingen gesproken. Ook het advies van AT is dat je op dit soort dingen niet moet reageren. Het kan je zelfs een gele kaart opleveren, omdat ook een terloops gemaakte opmerking in feite een kort zo is met een niet gelicenseerde. Beter niet doen dus. CQ, 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 calling all radio amateurs and shortwave listeners. This is GB2RS. The news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find your uh, the uh, text of this bulletin on the RSGB's own website. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G3, YLA and G4BAO. This week has been a little unsettled in terms of geomagnetic disturbances and we're still experiencing the summer HF doldrums at least till t- September. The K-index hit three on many occasions due to ongoing coronal hole activity, and these negated the slight rise in the solar flux index caused by a handful of weak sunspots. Maximum usable frequencies have risen above 21 megs at times, with the 4X6TU international beacon in Israel, RR90 in Russia, OH2B in Finland, and ZS6DN in South Africa being heard on 18.110 and 21.150 megahertz, but a casual glance across the rest of the HF bands has not shown vast amounts of DX activity. Next week, NOAA predicts the solar flux index will remain in the range of 75 to 80. Geomagnetic conditions should be reasonably settled apart from midweek, when the K-index is predicted to rise to 4. This is due to yet another recurrent negative polarity high-speed solar wind stream from a coronal hole. We continue to encourage you to look for evening openings on 20 metres when D-layer absorption has dropped off, hopefully leaving potentially good DX paths. And during the day, don't ignore 5 MHz, a band that continues to offer opportunities for NVIS contacts around the UK at a time when 40 metres is only open to Europe. Now VHF and up, the unsettled weather over the weekend will mean that some rain scatter may be available, and in the south of the country a weak ridge of high pressure across Biscay and northern France could also provide some extended tropo paths early in next week, as the high moves towards Scandinavia by midweek. Tropo paths across the North Sea may be worth exploring. It's possible that some thundery weather may creep north over western Britain, later in the week to reintroduce the possibility of rain scatter on the gigahertz bands. We're getting nearer the tail of the 2016 sporadic east uh, season, so events may be harder to find, but having said that, there was a nice transatlantic open last week on 50 megs, and there should be some jet streams over Europe and the Atlantic this week that might provoke, promote some late season sporadic E. For this you'll need to check the cluster, particularly late morning and around tea time. There are no meteor showers this week, so it's back to early mornings for the best random meteor scatter conditions. EME conditions will be good this week with low losses and long moon windows, so look out for inspired and recharged EMEers returning from this weekend's EME 2016 conference. And that's it for this week from the Propagation team. 
An unexpected invitation from the Venezuelan Navy has given an opportunity for the expedition to Arvas Island, IOTA reference NA020. Last activated in February 2007, it's number 17 on the Club Log DXCC most wanted list. A small number of civilian and Navy operators will be on the air as Yankee X-ray Zero Victor for up to 10 days around the end of August and the start of September. The exact dates are dependent on the Navy's plans. Arvis Island is only about 1,200 feet long and some 150 feet wide and is situated west of the Leeward Islands. Thanks to the efforts of BATC and AMSAT UK volunteers, videos of presentations at the July 2016 International Space Colloquium are now available on YouTube. These and previous year's presentations can be downloaded from the AMSAT UK YouTube channel. AMSAT UK members operated a satellite ground station during the event using the call sign G0AUK. Contacts were made via the SO50, AO85 and FO29 satellites. Gerald Youngblood, K5SDR, and, Young, and Youngblood, KDFGE, and Laurie Hicks of Flex Radio visited the National Radio Centre at Bletchley Park recently. They delivered a generous donation to the GB3RS station, a Flex Radio at Flex 6500, and a Flex Maestro. The trio from Flex Radio were met by RSGB President Nick Henwood, G3RWF and RSGB manager Tim uh, Steve Thomas, M1ACB, as well as several of the National Radio Centre's regular volunteers, the former reporters in the September edition of RADCOM. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Rewind and a look back on our history. World War I communications and the telenet of things. ENT Magazine of the Institution of Engineering and Technology, IET, reports on the exigencies of World War I meant that electronic communications had to find new ways to interoperate in the battlefield and the home front. Can the beginnings of today's interconnected domains be found in the innovations that came out of the necessities of that war? When the First World War began, the British War Office seemed to pay little attention to the developments of new technologies to be deployed in the prosecution of hostilities. There was of course no way of knowing that in 1914 that the conflict would last more than four years or that electronic communications would come to play such an integral part in the Allied war effort on both the front line and the home front.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald.